okay okay in the last class we have discussed about uh, plati helmans okay we are we are discussing about uh, okay we are discussed about uh, four phylas that is uh, porifera cylindrata tenophora and platyhelminths okay these are the four phyla that we have discussed in the last class and today we'll discuss about uh, some of the phyla of the of the animal kingdom there is a ascalmentis enlida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and chordata these are the phyla which are left okay that one we will discuss now so okay first we'll go with the uh, ask helminths okay when you observe the phylum ask helminths the body of the ask helminths is circular in cross section okay that means uh, okay when you observe these are round worm like organisms elongated round worm like organisms okay that's why these organisms are commonly called as a these organisms are commonly called as a round worms these organisms are commonly called as a round worms okay that's That's right. Okay, because they are circular in section. And next, they may be free living. That means in these free living forms are there aquatic and terrestrial, or parasitic in plants and animals, and parasitic in plants and animals. Okay, so we will find free living, aquatic and terrestrial. okay some are aquatic and some are terrestrial free living forms are there and at the same time some are parasitic on uh, plants and animals parasitic on plants and some are parasitic on uh, animals including human okay that is uh, so these are the different groups of organisms that we observe and next uh, when you observe the round worms round worms have organ system level of body organization okay that means when compared to platyhelminths these are a little bit higher in organization that is with the organ system level of organization okay and next they are bilaterally symmetrical okay they are bilaterally symmetrical that means the body is able to cut into two equal halves in only one plane passing through the center so that's why we are calling it as a bilaterally symmetrical and next these are triploblastic triploblastic that means they possess three germinal layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm three germinal layers and next and these are pseudo coelomate animals okay that means the coelom is present but it is a false coelom because uh, the coelom is not present as they are the body cavity is not present as a continuous body cavity it is present in the form of small pouches which is lined by mesoderm small small large number of pouches are present which are lined by mesoderm that's why okay such a coelom which are such a body cavity which is divided into patches lined by mesoderm we are calling it as a pseudo coelom we are calling it as a pseudo coelom and next elementary canal is complete with a well developed muscular pharynx okay elementary canal is complete with a well developed muscular pharynx 
okay when you observe the elementary canal okay is complete that means we'll find mouth and anus separately okay the anterior end of the elementary canal we are calling it as a mouth which is the opening okay the anterior opening of the elementary canal we are calling it as the mouth and the posterior opening of the posterior opening of the elementary canal we are calling it as a anus so both mouth and anus are present so we say that the mouth is okay the elementary canal is complete or the digestive system is complete okay and with the well developed muscular pharynx that means the pharynx is present which is muscular which is helpful in intaking of food material okay this muscular pharynx okay which is well developed is helping in a intake of food material okay and next an excretory tube remove body waste from the body cavity through the excretory pore okay that means throughout the length of the body a canal called as excretory canal or excretory tube will be there okay and this excretory canal will uh, collects the uh, waste materials from the body body and finally it is sent outside through the excretory pore that is present on the body so the excretory tube opens outside through a excretory pore okay and next sexes are separate okay that means uh, that means we will find the male worm and female worm separately male worm and female worm separately so we say it as a dioecious di means two that means we find different organisms okay that means uh, we are able to okay that means uh, we are able to differentiate the male worm from the female worm by its external features okay this phenomenon we call it as a sexual dimorphism that a sexual dimorphism we can observe clearly in case of this uh, round worms as they are unisexual okay that is a males and females are distinct that means we can able to easily we can distinguish the male from the female worm okay that is a, such a phenomenon in which we can able to differentiate the male worm or male organism from the female organism by its external features then such a phenomenon we are calling it as sexual dimorphism and such organisms we call it as dioecious organisms okay and next how we can able to distinguish the male from the female often females are longer than males okay we can see here okay this is the male worm this is the female worm okay we can see the female worm is long when compared to the male worm and next we can see here okay the male worms the po okay the posterior end which we are calling it as a tail the tail is straight it is not curved at its tip it is not curved at its tip but when it comes to the male in the male okay we can observe the posterior end which we are calling it as a tail the tail is curved the tail is curved okay we can see here okay posterior end of the male is curved but when you observe the female the female is having straight okay posterior tail okay now so that means the first one length okay usually the females are longer than uh, males that means uh, the males are short they are not uh, very long they are very short whereas when compared to the females and next is the second one is a uh, okay we can observe the posterior tail the posterior tail of the male is curved whereas the female is straight and next the third one okay when you observe here here we can find two thread like structures okay 
OK. We can see here. OK, two like structures uh, at the tip of the posterior tail. OK, these are called pineal setae. What they are called as a pineal setae. This pineal setae are observed only with the males. And these pineal setae helps in copulation. Okay, these pineal setae helps in a copulation. That is holding the female during the exchange of gametes. Okay, that curved posterior tail and pineal setae are absent with the female worm. Okay, understood. Anybody is having any doubt? Coming to the reproduction, okay, when you observe the fertilization is internal, okay, that means the fertilization takes place within the body of the female organism. That's why we are saying the fertilization is internal and the development may be direct or indirect. The young ones resemble the adult. That means, okay, the development may be direct. That means, okay, the okay, the eggs are laid and the eggs are hatched out, and these eggs will give rise to young ones, which are similar to that of adult except the size. Okay, but in some organisms, we'll find the larval forms. But in some organisms, we'll find the larval forms that means some intermediate structures called larva are present which later develops okay for example if you observe the ascaris ascaris shows a direct development the xr okay the xr released okay after the fertilization the xr produced and the xr released outside when you observe this ascaris this is commonly called as a round worm, and this is usually present inside the intestine of a human. Okay, at one time, this ascaris will lay around two lakhs of eggs. Okay, it lays about two lakhs of eggs, and these eggs will come along with the undigested food material or excreta of the human. And next. And these eggs are carried by the mechanical carriers like a fly and mosquitoes onto the food material. And this contaminated food material, when is eaten by the human, it will enter into the digestive system. Okay, and in the digestive system, the eggs are break okay broken down, and the young ones which resemble to the tofu. Adults are released, which will enter into the intestine and uh, develops into adult. So here we don't find any intermediate stage. So the development is said to be direct. But when it comes to ukraria, which is commonly called as a filarial worm, which causes of filariasis are elephantiasis. Filariasis are elephantiasis. Okay, in this, the development is uh, indirect because uh, we'll find the larval forms in between. Okay, we'll find uh, larval forms in between. Okay, larval form. Okay, that is called microfilaria larva. Okay, this microfilaria larva will undergo three different stages. First stage microfilaria larva, second stage microfilaria larva, and third stage microfilaria larva. And finally, this third stage microfilaria larva will enter into the human body from mosquito. There is Culex mosquito. And finally, causes disease called filariasis in human. 
So, vocal area shows indirect development. And next, ankylostoma. Okay, which is commonly called as hookworm. Okay, it is also the parasite which lives in the intestine of human. Ankylostoma. But it lives in the small intestine. Okay, ankylostoma, hookworm. Okay, and next, these organisms, the body is covered by cuticle. The body is covered by cuticle, okay, which will protect the enzymatic actions of the digestive digest system of human. From the enzymatic action, this cuticle will be, pro okay, will protect, okay, this cuticle will protect the, okay, these roundworms from the action of enzymes in the intestine of a human. Okay, that is, so these are, okay, this is, these are the, some of the general characteristics that are exhibited by these uh, organisms that were included under the phylum Askhelmans. And uh, okay, we'll come across one more organism related to nematode or Askhelmanthes which is parasitic on a plants that is a mellow design okay mellow design is a, a nematode parasite which causes infection to the tobacco roots of tobacco plant remember this organism mellow design okay we'll come across this organism in plus 2 in detail Okay, that is, uh, that is, these are the, some of the characteristics related to this uh, Ask Halmanthis. And next, anybody is having any doubt regarding Ask Halmanthis? No, sir. And next, coming to phylum Enelida. Okay, phylum Enelida. They may be aquatic, marine and freshwater, or terrestrial free living, and sometimes parasitic. For example, you can take, no, leech. Leeches. Okay, these are parasitic on the blood of vertebrates. It is an ectoparasite which is on the blood of vertebrates, the leeches. These are uh, freshwater organisms. Freshwater organisms, the leeches. And next, uh, terrestrial free living, earthworm. You know very well the earthworm, okay, which is a free living but a terrestrial form, okay, and sometimes parasitic. Parasitic means so we can take the leech, okay, the leech as an example, which is a parasitic. And next, uh, these organisms show organ system level of body organization, they exhibit an organ system level of body organization and bilateral symmetry that means we'll find different types of system digestive system excretory system okay nervous system okay circulatory system like this different types of systems which are organized by different different organs okay different organs are organized to form different systems okay and they are showing bilateral symmetry. That means uh, the organism is cut into two equal halves in only one plane passing through the center, which we are calling it as a median sagittal plane. Okay, and they are triploblastic. That means uh, these are the organisms with the three germinal layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. All the body parts are developed from these uh, 
germinal layers only and next metamerically segmented that means we can see here okay when you observe these organisms the first one you are observing is the neeris and the second diagram that you are observing is the leech okay we can observe in both these organisms the body is divided into small small structures called as segments and uh, these uh, body segments uh, each body segment consists of some parts of the body which are repeated throughout the length of the body okay that's why we are saying a uh, metamerically segmented already we discussed while we are discussing about uh, okay the basic concepts related to classification so metamerism okay metamerism is observed for the first time in the animal kingdom that is observed in annelids that's why we say metamerically segmented and coelomate animals okay these are the first true coelomate animals first true coelomate animals that is you coelomate because before this we have got platyhelminths and ascalmens platyhelminths are a coelomates and uh, ask elements are pseudo coelomates but these are the first group of organisms in the animal kingdom which are showing a use coelom or true coelom so that's why we say okay coelom and uh, the type of the even okay and uh, we can say the type of the coelom is uh, you, okay schizo coelom remember this one note it down Schizocelum, S C H I Z O C O E L O M, Schizocelum, S C H I Z O C O E L O M, Schizocelum. Okay, that is the coelom which is formed by the splitting of normal cells. The coelom which is formed by the splitting of a mesodermal cells that's why we are calling it as a schizocelom true coelom but schizocelom okay that is and next their body surface is distinctly marked out into segments or metameres and hence the phylum name annelida okay that is in the okay that is and next when you observe here the body is divided into a large number of small small structures called segments and these segments are uh, okay metameric segments that means uh, okay each segment consists of uh, some parts which are repeated throughout the length of the body okay and so because of this metameric segments that are present in these organisms hence the given as a uh, annelida okay here the in the lat okay in the latin annulus means uh, little ring annulus means a little ring so as the body consisting of a uh, little ring like structures called segments and they are metamerically segmented that's why we are calling them as a uh, metameric segments are and the phenomenon we are calling it as metamerism okay and next in the organisms the longitudinal and circular muscles which help in locomotion okay they possess a longitudinal and a circular muscles which help in locomotion due to the contraction and relaxation of these muscles in the locomotion or movement of that organism okay and next and in some aquatic annelids like a uh, neeris possess lateral appendages which we call it as a parapodia which help in swimming we can see here okay this is neeris body 
we can see here okay at the tip of each segment we'll find a two thread like structures arising those are nothing but a parapodia those are nothing but a parapodia and these parapodia helps in a okay locomotion that is a swimming because it's a aquatic organism okay okay that is and next and in these organisms a closed circulatory system is present okay what is mean by closed circulatory system can anyone say what is mean by closed circulatory system so the circulatory system consists of veins okay don't say veins we say blood vessels because okay. arteries and veins both are present so we have to say blood vessels okay okay so in the okay that means uh, if the in the organism if the blood is flowing in closed blood vessels you can say it as a closed circulatory system okay now so that is a closed circulatory system is present so in these organisms the blood will flow in the blood vessels okay we can observe for the first time the organisms with a closed circulatory system this one elida okay and next okay and what are the excretory organs okay the excretory organs are a nephridia plural nephridia singular nephridium so nephridia help in osmoregulation and excretion already i told you very clearly before only okay the primary function of any excretory organ whether it is present in a okay high, okay the chordates or vertebrates or in case of na okay invertebrates whatever you say okay what is the primary function of excretory organs means osmoregulation the primary function of ex is osmo regulation and the secondary function only osmo okay the excretion why we are saying means because uh, the excretory organs are not meant to remove waste materials its the primary function is to maintain water and electrolyte balance in the body while it is removing the water excess water that is present or excess salts that are present in our body along with that this excretory waste is also sent outside so that means while it is doing one work okay along with that the other work is also automatically done so that means the excretory organs are not meant to remove the waste materials primarily okay the excretory organs are primarily meant for osmo regulation osmo regulation what is more the term osmo refers to water balance when the water balance will be maintained means when the chemicals that are dissolved in that water are maintained that is we can okay in your lower class you might have studied no okay the diffusion okay hypotonic solution hypertonic solution okay what happens when you place a cell in a hypertonic solution what happens what happens when you place a cell in a hypertonic solution the water will enter into the cell or the water will comes out of the cell into the solution first of all what is meant by diffusion so exchange of gas between cells diffusion means uh, the movement of molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration 
okay the moment okay the movement of molecules from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration we are calling it as a diffusion so always the molecules will move from the region of higher concentration to the lower concentration under natural conditions under normal conditions with okay we are not providing any special conditions or that under normal conditions always the molecules will move from a high concentration to lower concentration this process we are calling diffusion so here what is happening okay when you place a cell in a hypertonic solution that means here the cell is having a low concentration low concentration means more water concentration okay the okay the salts are less but water is more and uh, the second one, okay when you observe the solution that is present around that cell that cell is uh, having higher concentration that means more minerals but water concentration is less so the water will move from a higher concentration region to the lower concentration so the water will comes out of the cell and enters into this uh, hyper hypertonic solution this process we call it as exosmosis okay this is all because of the difference in the concentration okay that is it. and at the same time if you place a cell in a hypotonic solution the water will continuously enter into the cell because here the cell is having a higher concentration when compared to the outer environment so the water concentration in the outer environment is more and the water concentration inside the cell is less so the water will enter into the cell that is called end osmosis okay if if okay both happens with the cell it will be damaging if the water okay if the water okay if the water is lost from the cell the cell will die even if the water enters into the cell continuously after a certain period of time the cell will burst and leads to the death of that cell both are not good for the organism always the cell has to maintain a equilibrium a particular concentration for that they need this excretory this maintenance of uniform concentration okay of water and mineral nutrients in the body we are calling it as osmoregulation okay and later osmoregulation and next so generally the concentration generally when you take if you take a fresh water organism generally the concentration of a body of the organism is higher when compared to the outer environment so continuous the water into the body of that organism so whatever the water that is entered into the body in excess that has to be sent outside otherwise the organism will die because of the change in the concentration because the organism has to maintain uniform concentration always but here what is happening uh, continuously the water is entering so whatever the water that is entered excess that has to be sent outside for that that uh, maintenance of that uh, uniform concentration in the body we are calling as osmoregulation and that is done by the excretory organs and while it is sending this excess water outside along with that whatever the min okay nitrogenous waste that are present in our body that also get dissolved in that water and is sent outside because these are the uh, waste materials are also chemicals only no they doesn't to be needed by the organism so they need to be sent outside okay this is sending out of this uh, nitrogenous waste outside 
is observed only in animals it is not observed in plants okay because of the presence of excretory organs okay that is so that is how the excretory organs are uh, functioning in a uh, animals and next coming to the nervous system okay neural system consists of paired ganglia that is singular ganglion singular okay we have to call it as ganglion so we will find paired ganglia that means two okay two ganglia each segment okay in each segment we will find two ganglia okay connected by lateral nerves to a double ventral nerve cord so we will find two nerve cords on the ventral side that's why we are calling it as a double ventral nerve cord okay on the ventral side of the organism we will find two nerve cords which are joined by the ganglia and these ganglia are interconnected by the nerves no 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 வெள்ள ஆமா பெரிய இந்த அரிஸ்டாட்டில் கண்டுபிடிப்பு நான் கண்டுபிடிச்சு சொன்னேன் நாலு நாட்டுக்கு நான் சொன்னோம்னா வெள்ளக்கடையெல்லாம் வரப்போகுது மண்புழுவுக்கு பச்சை எஸ் நாங்க பள்ளிவாடத்துல பாத்திரம் போகும்போது மம்புழு and next uh, nephridia so the nephridia help in osmoregulation and excretion and the neural system consists of paired ganglia okay that means uh, okay connected by lateral nerves to a double ventral nerve cord that means a double ventral nerve cord is there and in each segment this double ventral nerve cord will have a pair of ganglia and these ganglia are interconnected by lateral nerves okay and they also gives of central okay segmental now so which will give, okay bring a control and coordination of different organs that are present in the segment okay and next coming to the reproduction okay when you observe the reproduction in these organisms will find both unisexual forms and bisexual forms will find both unisexual forms and bisexual forms for example you can see the neris neris and aquatic form is dioecious that means a unisexual that means we'll find male neris and female neris but when it comes to earthworms and leeches which also include under this enlida they are monoecious that means they are bisexual they are bisexual the leeches and uh, earthworms are bisexual that is monoecious and next uh, reproduction is a sexual that is uh, the reproduction usually sexual means uh, usually we don't find a sexual reproduction in these organisms okay we can see here example 
Neris, which is an aquatic form, which is unisexual, whereas a feritima, that is earthworm. The feritima is the scientific name for earthworm. There are different, okay, different uh, earthworms uh, that are present at different parts, okay, in the northern part of India, southern part of India, and in different, different countries, we'll find different species of uh, earthworms. Okay, this feritima is the commonly occurring South Indian form. Okay, South Indian earthworm, that is a feritima. Okay, that is it. And next, uh, hyrudinaria. Hyrudinaria is the scientific name of a, okay, leech, blood sucking leech. Leech. Why, we, why it is named as hyrudinaria means uh, because uh, it produces uh, an, uh, a chemical substance called hyrudinage. Okay, which is uh, which will prevents the clotting of blood while cl okay while uh, sucking the blood of the vertebrates. Okay, the leeches will secrete an uh, enzyme called uh, hyaluronidase, which will uh, prevents the clotting of blood at the time of uh, clotting. Okay, at the time of uh, sucking the blood from the vertebrate body. In this leeches. That's why it was named as a hyrudin area. That means as it possess area means bearing. As it possess this chemical hyrudin age. That's why it was named as a hyrudin area. Okay. That is about this uh, phylum Enelida. Okay, you can see here. That, okay, this leech. Okay, the lower end. Okay, here we'll find one sucker. This is the sucker, which helps in attachment with the body of the organism and helps in sucking of blood. Okay, we'll have we'll have two suckers, one on the anterior end and one on the posterior end. Okay, anybody? Okay, anybody is having any doubt? No, sir. Okay, kindly mute while you while the class is going on. Okay, some members are unmuting. Okay, if you have got any doubt, you can unmute and you can ask. But when the class is going, okay, in between some members are unmuting. And uh, disturbing the class that is not accepted. Okay, if that is the case, I will not allow you to unmute your mic. Then you will be the losers. I'll go, I'll go with my teaching. And you, okay, even if you get any doubt, uh, I can't able to clear your doubt. That's why when okay when the class is going on, kindly mute yourself. When you are having doubt, you can mute and you can ask. That is acceptable. Or raise your hand and later you mute. Okay, unmute yourself and ask your doubt. That option is available. You can raise, you can show, okay, you can have your reactions or you can send your message chat. Otherwise, I will, uh, I will not allow you to unmute yourself and uh, simply I will ask you to send the message in the chat. Disturbance. So that is not acceptable anymore. Okay. And next, the next phylum is the arthropoda. Phylum arthropoda. Okay, when you observe here. The phylum of what is the largest phylum of the animalia, which includes insects. Okay. How much largest is uh, almost 70%. Okay. 70% of the animals up to now discovered belonging to this uh, arthropoda only. Okay. 70% of the animals that we have discovered up to now with reference to animals 
belongs to Atropoda. So, okay, now, and next, that means, okay, I will make a clear again. Okay, out of 10 animals we have discovered, seven of them are arthropods only. Now you can understand very clearly. That much large number of arthropods are present, a large number of species of arthropods. Not only ma, when you observe here, one thing you have to remember, the weight of the human, the total number of human that are present on the earth, what is the total weight of the human? That is equal to the number of ants that are present on the earth. That much huge number of ants are present. There are some, okay, thousand species of ants. Only we know some four or five different varieties of ants are on view. But there are some thousand species of ants. Yeah, ants, only ants. Okay, that is the huge number. Okay, so we can see here. That's why it is considered as the, the largest phylum of the animal kingdom. Okay, this is the largest phylum of animalia, which includes insects. Okay, here we can see over two thirds of all named species on earth are arthropods. Okay. Here they are comparing with the total species on the earth. Two third, that means two third, that means almost it is equal to 66.6% of the total species on the earth, not even animals. If it raised to animals means it comes to 70%. When you compare with all the other animals, it is coming like a two third, 66%. So over two third of all named species on earth are arthropods. That's the huge number. And next, they have organ system level of organization. They have organ system level of organization. That means uh, they possess different organ systems. That is digestive system, okay, circulatory system, excretory system, nervous system, reproductive system, like this, uh, we'll find a different system. So, and next, they have bilateral, okay, they are bilaterally symmetrical. That means they show bilateral, okay, bilateral symmetry. That means the body of the organism is cut into two equal halves in only one plane passing through the center. That is the median sagittal plane. And next, these are triploblastic organisms, okay? That means they possess three germinal layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. And next, okay, and these are segmented. That means the body is divided into many segments. We can see here, okay, even if you take the grasshopper, even if you take the butterfly, even if you take the scorpion, or even if you take the prawn, we can see the body is divided into small, small structures called segments. So the body is segmented. And coelomate animals. Okay, that means they possess a true coelom, u coelom, and that is a size of coelom only, like the trap and lace. Okay, the body cavity is of a size of coelom. Okay, that is it. And next, when coming to these organisms, the body of arthropods is covered by exoskeleton. Okay, we'll find the skeleton, which is present on the outer side. Okay, which encloses the, all the organs inside. The uh, okay, that is uh, this uh, exoskeleton. That means uh, why we are calling it as skeleton means because it is the hard structure which is giving, which is giving certain shape to the organism and helps in the attachment of different parts of the body, and it is also providing some space for the attachment of muscles. That is, the uh, striated muscles are voluntary muscles. Okay. So that's why. So that's why we are calling it as a 
skeleton as it is present on the outer side we are calling it as a exoskeleton and this skeleton is made up of a chitinous chitin okay a complex carbohydrate called chitin okay that is the chemical substance with which this exoskeleton is made up of chitinous exoskeleton that's why they say okay that is that means even when the arthropod dies the organs that are present inside the body will undergo decomposition but the skeleton or the chitinous exoskeleton remains for a longer period of time okay it also decomposes but it will take a very long time like that of our bones in our body we will find bones now okay the bones also decompose but it will take very long time for a decomposition but when compared to the outer organs that are present okay all other organs that are present in our body okay the same way we can observe this chitinous skeleton that's why we say it is the skeleton of our okay of the arthropods and next when you observe the body the body consists of a head thorax and abdomen what is a head okay what is the head can anyone say what is mean by head sir what you are asking sir what what is mean by head we don't what is mean by head what is the definition for a head what is the definition for head what the head consists of tell me so the head consists of brain in any organism what the only brain how we are perceiving the environment what how we are detecting the changes that are taking place in the environment how okay how you are able to feel that the food is tasty or not how you are able to feel the smell of any object how you are able to hear the different sounds how you are okay how you are able to respond to all this okay I... okay that is uh, that is nothing but head okay that means the anterior end of the body where the sense organs and the nervous system is concentrated okay the anterior end of the body where sense organs and the nervous system is concentrated that part we are calling it as head only when these are present that one only we are calling it as that's why up to now we didn't used the term head up to the phyla porifera cylindrata nideri okay tinopora platyhelminths nematyhelminths or ascalmans and enlids usually we didn't used the term head because in these organism the sense organs are not that much concentrated at the anterior end and the nervous system is also not that much concentrated at the anterior end only starting from anteriorly we can observe very clearly the concentration of a sense organs and the nervous system at the anterior end of the body and that part we are calling it as head and why these sense organs and the nerve brain okay this brain or nervous system is concentrated at the anterior end means that is the first part of the organism which will encounters with the environment whenever any organism is moving into the environment it will move with its anterior end only it will not move with this uh, posterior end so whatever the any okay, conditions of the environment that can be detected with these sense organs that are concentrated at the anterior end 
that's why the sense organs are con concentrated at anterior end okay and uh, the nervous system because uh, these sense organs will be very close and so that they can send the information very fastly and they can detect the changes that are taking place in the environment effectively and can respond that's why that head is present at the anterior end which is concentrated with sense organs and the brain and that part we are calling it as head so the head the body of the arthropods is divided into head thorax and abdomen okay head and next uh, the middle part of the body we are calling it as thorax and the posterior part of the body we are calling it as abdomen so that is okay so the body is divided into three parts okay anterior and the head middle thorax and the posterior part that is abdomen and next okay why the name given as arthropoda okay here you can observe poda poda means or appendages poda means feet or appendages you can say okay ardo means jointed so these are the organisms with the jointed appendages any structure you see any structure even if you observe the antenna even if you observe the okay legs okay the body is a, okay it is a consisting of a jointed appendages okay we'll find antenna we'll find glossa paraglossa okay and next galea okay anything any structure you can observe all these structures different mouth part different mouth parts will observe all these are uh, different parts of the body are consisting of a jointed structures small small structures are jointed that's why we are calling it as a jointed appendages that's why the name derived as a arthropoda okay that is they have jointed appendages that is arthros means joint okay poda means appendages that's why the phylum name given as arthropoda even you can see any part okay any part of the organism okay we can see the legs of a grasshopper the okay the okay the legs of a butterfly and next uh, the legs of a uh, okay this uh, scorpion the legs or appendages of a prawn any organism even if you take cockroach insect it's like mosquitoes flies anything which are included on the arthropoda all they are having a jointed appendages okay and next coming to the respiration when you observe the respiration the respiratory organs are gills book gills book lungs or tracheal system okay in different forms we'll find a different types of excretory organs okay gills in case of prawns we'll find uh, gills in case of prawns we'll find uh, gills and next uh, book gills okay book gills in case of uh, scolopendra and next uh, book lungs book lungs in case of scorpion in case of scorpion we'll find book lungs okay the the organisms that were included under the class arachnida they consist of book lungs scorpions spiders they possess a book lungs and the tracheal system which is made up of tubular structures called trachea 
that's why we are calling it as a tracheal system this tracheal system is uh, observed in all insects in all insects okay whatever the most of the insects that we will observe flies mosquitoes cockroaches ants termites in all these organisms we will find a trachea lice okay we will find a trachea as the respiratory organs and that's why we are calling as tracheal system and next coming to the circulatory system the circulatory system is of open type okay what is meant by open type of circulation Sir, the blood are not carried by the vessels, sir. Yes, ma'am. As the blood is not present inside the blood vessels, we are calling it as a open type of circulation. Okay. The remaining part will continue in the next class, ma'am.